Good evening, and welcome to the Cambridge Union. Tonight's main debate motion is This House Fears the Coming of the Immortal Generation. As cures for ageing continue to become something discussed more and more in the mainstream media, and we move towards cures for all those diseases that continue to ravage old age, and in particular, the ageing process, the House tonight asked whether or not we should fear the coming of immortality. We used to live for only 40 years at a time, and now we're living 80 years. How much life is enough? The terrible thing is not immortality. The terrible thing is aging. I feel that this is simply medical research. The actual defeat of ill health is not controversial. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants anybody else to be sick. And that's true irrespective of how long ago they were born. Which is it? Is it just medicine in which we are sensibly extending health spans? Again, which nobody is against. Okay? Or is it the hype surrounding immortalism? You're saying aging is a treatable disease. It's a treatable condition. And, of course, it's not treatable yet, but it's potentially treatable. If we can keep people physically and mentally youthful, then why should there be any limits? I think there really shouldn't be. The idea that death is a disease is very intriguing. What hurts is whatever medical advancements come are going to come too late for me and everybody I love and it didn't cure my mom. What we do is cryonics, or human cryopreservation. These are our patient containment vessels. In each one is four whole body patients and up to five neuro patients, which are basically just the brain in the skull. We call them patients because we don't consider them to be dead. Now, they're not alive because there's no metabolism, but if by dead you really mean irreversibly, irretrievably gone, then they're not. And that puzzles people because, sure, they're alive or dead. Well, no, they're kind of an in-between state. As soon as the doctor declares the patient to be legally dead, we can move the patient from the bed into the ice bath. We're going to cover them with ice. Here we use party ice just for demonstration purposes. We're going to add water, because if you just put ice on top of someone, it doesn't cool them very quickly. And then we use this device, the squid, to circulate the icy water around the patient. And that accelerates the cooling process. So this might seem odd in that the doctor's just declared you legally dead, but we're restarting everything, uh, which means that there is actually a possibility the person could return to awareness temporarily. So of the 16 or 17 medications we give, the first is propofol. And we'll administer that to slow metabolism primarily, but it also ensures they won't wake up in a freezing cold bath. We're gonna slow everything down and then stop everything biologically, and essentially take you through time with no change until a point where it's possible that we may be able to reverse the cause of death in today's sense and bring you back to life. My first impression is, this is a cemetery for people who can't let go. I have never not thought that we go on in some way after death. But I can see that if you grew up not believing that or, or not having that, that sense of core assurance, you would want to live forever.
Have you ever been to the other side? Yeah, that's a remote area of Scotland called Noydart. I went over there in a small boat with my father when I was young. And uh, he'd been told to go over there by a local drunk who said it was the Wilk Motherlode. Wilks are? They're so small sea snails that you can sell. And uh, yeah, a summer squall blew up and my dad got knocked into the sea by the boat and the boat got hold and uh, he had to go and uh, go to that little farm there and call for help. The beach looks beautiful from here. Yeah, it looks beautiful from here, but it's actually pretty steep and inhospitable when you get there. When I look out at this landscape, I can't help but think about deep time. Hundreds of millions, billions of years into the past. We're just mayflies in that span of time. Do you want to live as long as the Earth, so to speak? Just a small slice of it, perhaps. Max Moore has said that death is nothing, it's just the end of existence, right? And he's absolutely right about that. You can't rationalize away your innate animal fear of not existing anymore. What I'm looking for is a different way of being human, a better way of being human. So I've made that decision. I'm going to be cryopreserved head only when I die. I do admire those who want to do cryonics because it is, even if it turns out to be a foolish venture, it is very brave. Like they want that adventure. And by God, they're going to have it. I'll see how I feel at 45, I'll see how I feel at 55. I definitely feel like I've just started living, even though I know that's not the case. And I can't imagine an end point when I feel like I'll have seen everything that I want to see. みんなあの食物連鎖フードチェーンの中にあの刺されこんでてその例外が人間なんですねあ、あのこの素晴らしいベニクラギオをね知ったきっかけと言いますのは今から含んでるなという直感があったのでいましたこれをあまりも小さいのでなかなか目で見えないので肉ラギがおります個人的なあの経験なんですけども非常にあのデリケートで弱い動物だと思います食べ過ぎてもダメ水が汚くてもダメ水が淀んでてもダメとか弱い動物だからこそえっと若返ってやっぱりあの種族は
、えー、若返りをしてもらいますちょっとかわいそうなんですけどもまあ痛みは我々みたいに感じることはないので体全体をつきます、so it's going to come back from this. はいはいもう肉団子になってしまうんですねでそれからあのもう戻れなくなってクラゲは戻れなくなって若い体の、まあ、ポリプっていう体に戻るんですね世の中で起こりませんけど、まあ、このクラゲでは、まあ、当たり前のように、えー、蝶々が芋虫に戻ってるわけですねクラゲがポリプに戻る蝶々が芋虫に戻るそんなこと聞いたことないですねきっとその秘密を探ればですねジェネラルなゲノムを持っていることも含めて When, if ever, do you think humans will gain the ability to be immortal? あと平均寿命からすると20年なのでそれ以内にやってほしいと非常に強く願っております。人間のその夢への応用が可能になるんじゃないかなと思えてならないんですね。To me, the richness of life can come from knowing that it's going to end. But I think maybe it's in fact very safe for all of us. To just assume that we're going to die someday, whereas Max and DJ and Shin are daring to think beyond that.